what's going on everybody welcome back in this video we are looking at the nba slate for thursday we have a four gamer starting at seven o'clock typical thursday small slate uh, we have some big news on some of these teams so there is going to be a lot of players to talk about and a lot of uh, a lot of different ways to approach the slate so let's get into it as always if you enjoy the videos appreciate if you guys hit the like button subscribe if you haven't already yesterday I fell short on DraftKings, hit in fanduel on some contest so hopefully we can uh, cash on both today with this four gamer. There are some just obvious plays, um, and there's some mispricing. Starting off at point guard, Chris Paul. You know I'm not gonna pay 97 for him. That last game, the pricing on both sides isn't the best. I know Dinwiddie probably will sit today after he played last night on a back-to-back -back set, uh, but I'm just not that interested in the uh, either side. He really here, like Dinwiddie, he played 29 minutes last night, so. Hasn't played a back-to-back -back yet. I'd expect him to miss. But really, you know, 9K for Beal hasn't really done it at all this year. You know, could look to uh, Neto or Holiday as some decent values. But we have better values in Brooklyn, better values in Detroit. Better values probably will open up in New York once we get the Barrett news in Houston. So I'm just not that interested in the Wizards side. And then the Suns, they're jacked up. Pricing 88 for DeAndre Ayn is a price tag I will never get to. Uh, I don't want to really want to get to 58 for Bridges, 51 for Johnson now that DeAndre Ayton is back. And Chris Paul is almost 10000 though. I'll never pay that price for Chris Paul. Uh, we have better, way better pricing on some of the other sides here. So point guard Paul, he's a fade for me. Beal's a fade. I like Cade Cunningham at 86. His price tag has gone way up, but there's reasons for that. Jeremy Grant is out for an extended period of time. So they're already very shorthanded. On just playmakers and Cade Cunningham is just going to take a huge bump in usage. He's going to be getting more rebounding opportunities, more assists, have the ball in his hands more. Jeremy Grant was a high usage player for the team, and you take him out, plug in, you know, just give more usage for Cade Cunningham. I think he looks like a great play. So I like Cade Cunningham more than Brogdon. And then Lavert's price tag has gone way up to 75. That seems like a pass. I don't want to pay 71 for Burks. That seems like a pass. Uh, Maxi at 69 is it's decent, but you know, I probably won't get to that either. Uh, Brooks at 54. Gordon is back, so I'm not that interested in his price. And then you have just some of these Brooklyn pieces that are cheap with uh, Duke, who broke the slate last time he started and put up north of 40. You have Saban Lee at 42. He's going to get good minutes off the bench, and he's been productive. 41 last game. They haven't really been giving minutes to uh, Josh Jackson and some of these other guys. Um, so, Saban Lee, give him mid-20s, high-20s in minutes. He can be productive. He's a pretty decent value play. Uh, but right now, I'm just going to plug in Cade Cunningham at shooting guard. You know, talk about some of these guys at the top end. Patty Mills is 66. He's pretty expensive. He's still in play just because Brooklyn doesn't have very many bodies. But I'd probably take the savings on, like, Chris Duarte. You, know, you have Garrison Matthews is cheap. You can look to Eric Gordon. But I'd probably just plug in the starter, who is going to be $4,200 uh, for uh, Duke. He's only small forward eligible. We'll plug him in at small forward. So we can plug him in at point guard and plug in Cade Cunningham at shooting guard. But he's 42. He played a ton of minutes. He went into overtime, played 37 minutes. He had four stocks, but he had 13 rebounds. So he kind of took it, took over that uh, James Harden rebounding role, getting all the rebounds. And then shooting guard will plug in Cade Cunningham. Now at small forward, Duran is still a, a plug and play on a four gamer, which uh, you know, he's just going to play so many minutes. He played 43 in regulation, gave you a triple double. You know, maybe you want to bet that triple double odds again today. I don't know what they are, but I'm sure they'll probably be sitting at a decent number. But he's just going to have to do everything without Harden. Uh, still no Kyrie. Don't know when that he will come back to the team. But going up against Philly, it should be a fun matchup between these two teams. So, even though he's very expensive, I'd rather get to Durant over, like, Beal over Chris Paul. So Matthews, somewhat decent at 46, but Keith Edwards looks decent at 4K. Uh, we'll have to wait and see if, like, RJ Barrett will play or not. So, he's been ruled out for Tuesday. He hasn't They haven't shown his status yet for today. If he's out again, then you can look to Kevin Knox as a value, but there are probably some better plays um, that we have now. Power forward, Sabonis, pretty expensive at 10.5. I'll probably pass on him, pass on 10K for Julius Randle. 
Uh, Sengun, I'll gladly plug him in at 55. Even though he came off the bench, was super productive last night. Uh, was at a very good price at 45. Now he's priced up to 55. It went up by 1,000, but they shouldn't have Christian Wood. They said he's going to miss at least probably two games. I wouldn't be surprised if they plug uh, Sengun into the starting lineup after the way he played last night. They're not getting much out of Daniel Tice. So Sengun, even if he starts or comes off the bench, I think he's still a very, very good play. Uh, you do have KJ Martin. Looks good for tournaments just because he's probably going to play low 20s in minutes. Can be productive. And then all the way at the bottom, you have... Um, if Tice does start, he's only 3,000, so you could look to him just because... Still be looking at high teens, low 20s in minutes, 3,000 for a player like him. You know, 20 plus is all you kind of need. At center, Embiid at 11-4. Looks great if you want to double pair Embiid and Duran and do a game stack. Sure enough, Christian Wood today. Uh, Turner at 67, he's in play. But I think we can look to a guy that's just going to have to play a lot of minutes for the, the Pistons, and that's Isaiah Stewart, who uh, played... 39 minutes, 39.6, so basically 40 minutes last game in overtime against Brooklyn. I mean, not overtime, in regulation against Brooklyn. Uh, so they just don't have very many bigs. They played Lyles like eight minutes. They could play him more, but they just don't like Lyles. But uh, Stewart just missed out on a double-double. He's probably going to chip in a lot of rebounding without Jeremy Grant, more scoring opportunities, um, and the minutes should be there a lot more. They can't really go small here against uh, Turner and Sabonis, so... As long as Isaiah Stewart is not in foul trouble, I'd expect him to log pretty heavy minutes today. So, so far we got two Pistons, a couple of Brooklyn pieces, a Houston Rocket, and then one last piece on Brooklyn that his price tag hasn't moved very much is Nick Claxton, who's 39 for some reason after he was 31. Like Blake Griffin, his price tag jacked up to 5000 um, and Claxton, his price only moved a little bit up to 39 He's still a great play. I'll plug him in at utility. You got 49 left for these two other spots, but feel pretty good about how this looks as of now. So that's it for the DraftKings side. Let's uh, talk about FanDuel. All right, FanDuel, point guard plays. You have Chris Paul, 86, as your most expensive piece. Uh, I still like Kate Cunningham at 79 on FanDuel. He looks cheaper. Uh, looks slightly better than like Brock. Well, I think Brogdon and him are similar, but I like Kate Cunningham's just... You know, having to do everything for the team, whereas Brogdon still has Sabonis. Has Levert been playing better? So he's not a one-man show like Kate Cunningham will have to be. Maxi's at a good price at 64. If Rose starts again without Barrett, he looks appealing. And uh, that's it. the main pieces at the bottom. Don't yeah, like Saban Lee if you want to take a shot there. But there's not too many good plays at point guard. At shooting guard, Bradley Beal looks good. Just at 82 is a lot different than 9,000. Uh, the position isn't super deep. So definitely you can make a case to get up to Bradley Beal. Still like Levert at his price. Duke is up to 61, so that is a lot different of a story. 57 for Cam Thomas. Maybe he'll have a decent game today after. He probably won't get too much ownership after the way he played last game. Uh, I like Brooks at 545. You know, not having Christian Wood there. He's still getting decent minutes. Struggled last night, but and that happens from time to time. And then uh, you have Josh Christopher, 39. He got good minutes off the bench, but not something you can really feel great about. Uh, so assuming that Brooks starts again, 45, I'll probably take a shot there. Small forward, plug in Kevin Durant, 12,000 is expensive, but you know I like to get to uh, the superstars. We have a lot of value plays on the slate, like Kessler, Edwards. I'm not going to pay 63. So FanDuel priced up some of these role pieces on Brooklyn that um, just don't look that appealing. Uh, Levert looks way better. Tate looks better. Gordon looks better. Burks looks way better as well. So definitely not going to be playing Kessler Edwards on FanDuel. Duarte at five thick at five K can make some arguments to get to him there. Uh, Garrison Matthews maybe can bounce back today. Uh, and then you have like no nothing looks that appealing at the bottom here. Justin Holiday is back, so you could look to him if you wanted to. Power forward plays. Sabonis so looks better. Randall looks way better than he does on DraftKings. Both the guys are over $1,000 cheaper. Tobias, 71 against Brooklyn. Wanted to get a piece of Philly. Definitely can make a case for Tobias. Blake Griffin is expensive. I like Stewart still at 6000 And Claxton at 59 looks decent. But give me Sangoon. He just gives you so much upside. I uh, wouldn't be surprised, like I mentioned, if he starts in this game. 
Center plays. Embiid is very cheap at 10-5. Sabonis looks great at 92. And if you're looking to, like, DeAndre Ayton is 8,000, so he's kind of expensive on both sides. Maybe you can look to Claxton instead at 59, but he's also expensive. So we have 59-60 left for the center spot. You have, none of these guys look that, like, must plays here. So maybe I'll just uh, plug in Sengun at center, plug in... Um, Durant at power forward, and then we can plug in Alec Burks, who's cheap, at small forward. I think that's probably the best approach here. Plug in Durant, and then you have Burks at 55. Looks good either way. He's been struggling shooting. Hopefully that turns around. It's a good spot for him to get back on track against Houston. So this looks a lot better than plugging in, like, Blake Griffin or Claxton at his elevated price. That's it for the video. Thank you for watching. A small four gamer. If you have updates, I'll post them on Twitter. Thank you for watching. Best of luck tonight, and I will see you all next time.